So now we have the final uh, talk uh, before the break. Um, and uh, that is from uh, Jo Eidsvik from uh, NTNU. He's a professor of statistics. Uh, and uh, the floor is yours, Jo. Go ahead. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to present um, some work uh, Jacopo, uh, a PhD student, did uh, with me, and Anna and Arndt from uh, Sintef. And it's on pore pressure prediction from uh, geological modeling inputs and uh, well log data. So, uh, in the big picture, we would like to um, predict pore pressure while drilling to help make better drilling decisions, for instance, about the mud weight and so on. So we want to uh, be sure that this is a safe operation and drill where it's uh, good to drill and so on. But in, the, in this setting, we of course have lots of geological inputs that we will use, in this case from PressSim, a uh, uh, software developed by Sintef. And then we also have data that we gather while drilling and we want to update our model to make predictions online in this case. A challenge is, um, of course, uh, uncertainties. And uh, uncertainties come in two steps here. We, we want to reduce the uncertainties, of course, while drilling to make better decisions. And then uh, you also want to include uncertainties because that's the only way you can try to integrate different kinds of data. So if you have geological data to begin with and then you get new data, you have to get the, the integration there, and then you need uncertainties. So as a statistician, I, I like uncertainties, of course. That's uh, what we make a living of, e except in sports. Then I like uh, Rosenberg to win all the time. <laughs> so. But I, I think uncertainties are important here. So what, well I'll, what I will present is a workflow, more or less, for this situation where you train a prior distribution from geological inputs, in this case PressSim that was de developed by Sintef some years back. And then we train a likelihood model from existing, existing well logs in the same area. And then we try to sequentially update our model as we go along. And it's not possible to update the PressSim machinery because that's built on complex differential equation for pressure buildup and release over geological time. So what we will do is to fit a Gaussian process model to the pressure in the subsurface and then update that as we go along. So that, that's, uh, that's the message of this talk. So what we have here is um, a case that's been studied um, a lot somewhere in the North uh, Sea where lots of layers are identified and lots of faults are identified and then you can generate the pressure buildup pretty well based on these data, and that's what's done in, in PressSim. And based on these data, we get something like this. You see um, pore pressure following the, the hydrostatic pressure to begin with, and then after a while you get start to get some overpressure. And you, you see it's varying, the trends are varying a bit with depth because you have different uh, layers here in the subsurface. So the first thing we do is to, to um, transform pore pressure to a variable that's on the real line, because then we can use Gaussian distributions and it's easier to optimize and it's easier to do computations. So we constrain pore pressure to be between the hydrostatic pressure and the overburden stress. And then this, this variable x is, a, is on the real line. And then Within each layer, we do regression analysis to uh, make the best out of these geological models. So we, we fit a linear model in each layer as a function of depth. And that gives us a, a trend, and the data w w do not follow this trend exactly, but we can look at the residuals to look at the, the, the variability and the correlation in the data. So that's the next step. And then we get something like this. So the, 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 there is spatial correlation here. We model that spatial correlation in depth and in the lateral direction using 
variograms, so these geostatistical tools, correlations. And then we get something like this along the, the well path and also in depth. You get covariances that are large within the layers, not so large uh, in the depth direction, because you, you, you take out some of the trend there. And as you drill, you want to update this. So as you have correlation, when you measure something at one depth, you would also change your model at other depths and, as, and at other lateral uh, coordinates. So that's, what's, we're doing, that's what the Gaussian process model is doing here. And of course, this is just a, a way of mimic, mimicking reality. It's not like this. We would like to have the full machinery of some geological model, but that's not possible to update online. So then we use the Gaussian process, which is well known and easy to understand. So if we plot the prior mean and prior uncertainties, we get something like this the, the, uh, as a function of depth. And then the, the green dots indicate uh, some kind of confidence level. I think in this case it's uh, 80%. And here it's transformed to this pressure scale be because the uncertainties are, are given on, on the real line, but we transform it back, in this case, to plot it as a function of, of uh, as pressure, as a function of depth. Okay, and then we get, so that was the first part. Now we've trained the prior model. Then let's go on to the data. How do we integrate the, the data we expect to collect when we drill a well? And then we look at a well log from the vicinity. Um, and we look at uh, the parts of the well log that are interesting to us. So we take out this part with uh, high resistivity and large gamma ray. That's uh, something we are not that interested in. We think that would mess up the likelihood uh, estimation because it's an inverse problem. You, if you want to predict pore pressure, there are lots of other effects also giving result to these uh, log data. It's not only pore pressure. So we try to reduce the influence of the other parameters. And then I, I use uh, some physics here, but I th there's lots of physical equations tying pore pressure to different variables. So Eaton Bowers, and this is an extension of Eaton Bowers de derived by Sh Shang a few years back. And this is not the, the, the golden uh, true case here. So within this framework, we try to tune some parameters. We estimate the best parameters in our data set. And then we get something like this. So the data for transit time and porosity seems to fall along this um, rock physics model trend pretty well. For our case, the resistivity data doesn't uh, match so well. And there, there could be many reasons for that. It's just w one case here. And then again, uncertainties come into the picture. So we fit the, the best model, the best physics model based on the data. And then of course there's uncertainty in the model. So again, we look at residuals in the model and then use the residuals to fit uh, a covariance function. So that gives us a likelihood model like this. You have pore pressure on the first axis and then you have resistivity, porosity, or transit time as the possible data you could gather uh, on the second axis. And you, you see that pore pressure and transit time are actually quite informative in this case about the, the, the pore pressure. Okay, so that, then we built a, a prior model and then using the geological inputs, that was the Gaussian process, and then we built a likelihood model using uh, well data in the vicinity of this uh, region. And then we can look at the updating. And if you're a Bayesian and you have a prior model and a likelihood model, you do the posterior model. And in this case, we imagine doing, doing this online as we're drilling in real time. So that means you start off with your prior model and as you collect more and more data, you sequentially update this, uh, this model. And since we built this on the Gaussian process, the equations are quite well known. A challenge is that the likelihood model is nonlinear, so we linearize that around the current mean, and then we can go on. So it's, these equations are connected with the Kalman equations, if you're familiar with that, and it's a, an, an easy way of Bayesian updating. 
Okay, so here's uh, what I what I get. Let's see if I can uh, run this uh, online. Yeah, so here you see what's happening. We're drilling down, and then you're updating your prediction here. And there, there's not that much change, but there's uh, some change. So there's some information in your measurements. So of course, these are not real measurements. We imagine playing a game here where we're drilling. What would we get? We have this prior, and we imagine getting data. And this is what could happen. And there's some information. The, the, the pore pressure trends are changing in this section of the subsurface. But the and the uncertainties are reduced, but maybe not so much. Because that would depend on the, on the measurement noise and the, the links, of course, be between pore pressure and um, the, the data. So th this is the same thing now in 3D. So this can be done not only along the borehole, but also in the spatial direction uh, going down and also in the uh, later other lateral domains. Yeah, so, so you see here that the, the uncertainty is reduced and there's slight changes in, uh, in the pore pressure predictions as well. So the, the, the standard deviation is to the left and the the mean, the conditional mean, as you go down, as you drill, is, is to the right. Yeah, so, so here's uh, just a, a screenshot as we go along. So this is at uh, step, thir t step 23 of the updating, of the sequential updating. That's at the top. And then at the bottom step, step 30 of the assimilation. And you see the scales are different here. So there's clearly a reduction in the standard deviation as you go deeper, as you get closer to the location you want to predict in this case. And there's also a shift in the prediction, in the prediction mean. So you see that the, the mean changed from, from 51.2 to, to 51.9 in the right column. Okay, what did we do then? We did lots of sensitivity analysis. So we checked what is the effect of more prior variability, because we, uh, we think we might have underestimated some of the initial uncertainty here. We know a lot about this case, but maybe not as much as this software press sim suggests in this case. So we try to increase the, the prior uncertainty. What would happen then? Then the data should have more influence we also try to change the prior model, saying that there's there's some global depth trend here, and would that global depth trend uncertainty help us um, in making a, another prior model that could be updated, and so on. So these are just showing the the differences in standard deviations, so the uncertainty in the predictions for different models. So here's something um, I'm quite interested in. And it's related to what kind of data you should collect. So if you start drilling, you know something about the case. What are the important data you should collect as, as you're drilling? Or if you stop drilling, want to collect, connect, collect some data. And then, of course, in this case, we see that porosity is very important because it's connected so much with pore pressure. Transit time on its own is not very important. But if you collect transit time and porosity, Together, you actually get uh, a big, uh, significant reduction in the uncertainty. And this is what you can do if you are really unsure about what decisions to make about mud weight and uh, other drilling decisions. Then you can do an evaluation up front. What, what, would, what kind of data would help me here make, make better decisions? So I, I think this could be useful. OK, to sum up. Um, I presented a, a, a Bayesian approach where you take in this geological inputs, build a, a Gaussian process model because that's easy to update, capturing the main trends of the pore pressure and also the variability and the correlation in pore pressure in the lateral and the depth direction. And then secondly, we fit this likelihood model using well logs in the vicinity. We tweaked and tuned some parameters. In this case, we use likelihood uh, maximization to fit the parameters in a physical model. And then we could do online updating. So we imagine drilling a well, and you do online updating. And what I like about this uh, approach, compared to some machine learning approaches, is that it gives the uncertainty. 
and it's, it captures some of the spatial variability in the, in the model. So that's not always easy in, in some other approaches. Okay, I uh, think that's it. Thank you. Thank you to you and Antony. Uh, questions? I mean, uh, we all uh, know that if it's one thing we get wrong in, in the oil industry, it's poor pressure prediction, so. Uh. Hi, thank you for a very nice talk. Um, wh when we're uh, looking at poor pressure, it's often the really big anomalies that are uh, of the biggest interest. Uh, your prediction shows quite an even uh, increase in poor pressure. Uh, would you be able to predict a large anomaly as well? That, that's a good point. So, so uh, we, we, we did notice some difference in variability here. So some layers had larger uncertainties than other layers. And uh, I don't know if you noticed that, but it, we, we have different uncertainties in different layers here. But as, as I said, I think we're underestimating that. So I think it's important to capture enough uncertainty in the prior. So we're, we're working on it. Yes, uh, thanks a lot for a really interesting talk. I was wondering um, if you have or if you plan to compare it to um, poor pressure measurements, so to see how well your model does in, in practice. Yeah. Yes, so that um, in, uh, in this case, we, I, I don't know how they get it. <laughs> I guess some of you know. But in this case, actually, after we made this analysis, we got some uh, real pore pressure measurements uh, from the same location, and and it fit very well. <laughs> so, but, but I, I, it seems to me like it's difficult and time consuming to actually get the pore pressure measurements. So what you, what you have to rely on is a proxy, w one way or the other, and then the question is, what proxies are are, are relevant here, and uh, it depends on the case, I guess. <laughs> 